Continuing chapter 2, we have the next paragraph as sites. Sites are places where the remains of things, tools, pots, buildings, etc. were found. These were made, used and left behind by people. These may be found on the surface of the earth, buried under the earth or sometimes even under water. You will learn more about different sites in the later chapters. Now, making stone tools. Stone tools were probably made using two different techniques. The first one is called stone on stone. Here the pebble from which the tool was to be made, also called the core, was held in one hand. Another stone which was used as a hammer was held in the other hand. The second stone was used to strike off flakes from the first till the required shape was obtained. That means, hum keh sakte hain, patthar ke upar patthar ragarna. The second one, pressure flaking. Here the core was placed on a firm surface. The hammer stone, stool, was used on a piece of bone or stone that was placed on the core to remove flakes that could be shaped into tools. That means you can see a picture how stone tools were made. One, on the, one of the two techniques is shown in the illustration. It is so nice. They are showing the two palms being used to make the stone tool. The next paragraph talks about finding about fire. Look, we have fire in front of us. The next part of the chapter is talking about finding about fire. Traces of ash have been found here. This suggests that the people were familiar with the use of fire. Fire could have been used for many things as a source of light to roast meat and to scare away animals. What do we use fire for today? There are so many ways, children, that fire is helping us. Yes, we use fire to celebrate various functions for various occasions. We use fire to cook. We use fire to scare away animals. And we often use fire in various rituals to perform the various, various occasions. And fire is often worshipped as God of energy too. A changing environment is the next paragraph. Around 12,000 years ago, there were major changes in the climate of the world with a shift to relatively warm conditions. In many areas, this led to the development of grasslands. This in turn led to an increase in the number of deer, antelope, goat, sheep and cattle, that is, animals that survived on grass. Those who hunted these animals now followed them, learning them about their food habits and their breeding seasons. It is likely that this helped people to start thinking about herding and rearing these themselves. Fishing also became important. This was also important and a time when several grain breeding Bearing grasses, including wheat, barley and rice, grew naturally in different parts of the subcontinent. Men, women and children probably collected these grains as food and learnt where they grew and when they ripened. This may have led them to think about growing plants on their own. The next paragraph, which is in blue colour, talks about names and dates. Archaeologists have been lengthy and giving us names for the time that we are studying today. They call the earliest period the Paleolithic. This comes from the two Greek words Paleo meaning old and Lithos meaning stone. The name points to the importance of finds of stone tools. The Paleolithic period extends from 2 million years ago to about 12,000 years ago. This long stretch of time is divided into lower, middle and upper Paleolithic. This long span of time occurs 99% of human history. The period when we find environmental changes beginning about 12,000 years ago 
till about 10,000 years ago, is called the Mesolithic Middle Stone. Stone tools found during this period are generally tiny and are called microliths. Microliths were probably stuck onto handles of bone or wood to make tools such as saws and sickles. At the same time, older varieties of tools continued to be in use. The next stage from about 10,000 years ago is known as the Neolithic. You will be learning about Neolithic in Chapter 3. Please have a look at this painting which is done and it tells that yes, people do have skills about nature. They look at nature with a beautiful eye because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. And the painting which is there in my hand, made by me for my son, tells that yes, people have skills and the skills have been brought from the ancestors and still continuing. Same way, we have a paragraph talking about rock paintings and what they tell us. Now you can see a painting here which is showing a painting from a rock shelter. It describes the painting that yes, a man is running behind the deer. Many of the caves in which these early people lived have paintings on the walls. Some of the best examples are from Madhya Pradesh and Southern Uttar Pradesh. These paintings show wild animals drawn with great accuracy and skill. The next paragraph talks about who did what. We have seen that the earliest people hunted, gathered, plant produce, made stone tools and painted on cave walls. Is there any way of finding out whether women hunted or men made stone tools? Whether men or women, it gives a brief description. Whether women painted or men gathered fruits and nuts, at present we do not really know. However, there are at least two possibilities. It, it, is, it is likely that both men and women may have done many of these things together. It is also possible that some tasks were done only by women and others only by men. And again, they could have been different practices in different parts of the subcontinent. The next blue paragraph tells me about ostriches in India. Ostriches. I hope my students know what an ostrich is. A huge bird. Ostriches were found in India during the Paleolithic period. Large quantities of ostrich egg shells were found at Patne in Maharashtra. Designs were engraved on some pieces which, while beads, were also made out of them. A now closer look at Hansgi. Hansgi is there on map 2, which we had already shown before. A number of early Paleolithic sites were found here. At some sites, a large number of tools used all sorts of activities were found. These were probably habitation come factory sites. Factory sites. In some of the other smaller sites, there is evidence to suggest that tools were made. Some of the sites were close to springs. Most tools were made from limestone, which was locally available. Can you think of a term for the second type of sites? It's a task. Children, please do it. Now let's talk about the paragraph which is having a heading called Elsewhere. Find France in your atlas. I hope you are smart enough to find France. The painting below is from a cave in France. This site was discovered by four school children more than a hundred years ago. Paintings like this were made between 20,000 and 10,000 years ago. Many of these were of animals such as wild horses, ochres, an older wild form of cattle, bison, woolly rhinoceros, reindeer and bear, painted in bright colours. These colours were made from, from minerals like orcry or iron ore and charcoal. It is possible that these paintings were done on ceremonial occasions or perhaps they were made from 
spirit special rituals performed by hunters before they went in search of prey. Coming to the end of the chapter, the exercise part, we have the keywords hunter-gatherers, sites, habitation, factory, paleolithic, mesolithic and microliths. Then we have let's recall, complete the statements or sentences which we will be discussing in the assignments and doing it later and we will also discuss the questions which will be done later on.